This is a beautiful integral that we're going to evaluate using the Feynman technique. Now, first of all, notice one thing about the function. If you replace x by uh, negative x, then since the sine function is, a, is an odd function, you can take the negative sign out, and you'll have negative sine x by negative x, which just simplifies to sine x by x. So we see that f of negative x equals f of x making the given function an even function. And we know one trick about even functions, that instead of integrating from negative to positive infinity, we could just double the integral from zero to positive infinity of sine x by x dx. So it's the integral from zero to infinity that we're concerned with. So with the Feynman technique, we want to define an integral function. Uh, and the function i is a, an, and i is a function of some parameter a. So where exactly do I place this parameter? Well, a no-brainer would be to place the parameter in the argument of the sine function uh, next to x. Now, differentiating uh, with respect to a, and I can now uh, take the derivative operator inside the integral, uh, now remember, once you shift it or interchange the uh, difference, uh, the uh, differentiation and integration operators, uh, the total derivative will be converted into a partial derivative with respect to a. So we're differentiating with respect to a, keeping x as a constant. So that means uh, 1 by x is just a constant term, and the sine function turns into a cosine function, and you have to uh, differentiate the argument as well, as per the chain rule. And since we're differentiating with respect to a, this x is the constant term that's going to be left out here. So the x's cancel out, and you're left with the integral from 0 to infinity of cos of ax. Now, although the integral of a cosine function is easy to evaluate, there's one problem here. We know that cos, uh, cos of x oscillates between the uh, negative and positive 1 values, right? Uh, so we can't say anything definitive about the behavior of cos of x as uh, x approaches positive infinity. We can't say anything definitive of it. So there's no way of evaluating this uh, improper integral. So the uh, choice of the uh, placement of the parameter, that means it didn't work. So what can I do? Where else can I place this parameter a? Well, one line of action could be that I multiply the uh, function inside the integral. I multiply the integrand by some function of a and x. Now, this function could be a polynomial, or it could be a trig function like sine of ax or cos of ax. It could be a natural log function as well natural log of ax, or it could be an exponential function like e to the ax. Now, among this choice, among these choices, we see that a polynomial function just won't cut it. We'll be back, we'll get back to the exact same problem as before. And uh, the trig options, well, they'll be pretty hard to integrate, honestly speaking. And uh, as far as the uh, natural log example is, the natural log won't do anything for the x in the den denominator again. However, uh, the exponential function seems a lot more favorable. So this seems like a good choice. And uh, I'm going to take e to the negative ax so that I know the behavior of the integral function as x approaches, uh, as x approaches positive infinity. So, uh, or a approaches positive infinity because... Uh, we know uh, we'll have to integrate. We'll have to integrate the uh, derivative of i with respect to a later, as per the Feynman technique. So we'll get to that bit in a while. But at least with the uh, negative, uh, with the uh, negative argument of the exponential function, I'll ha I'm, I'm having some clarity about the function's behavior, and it's not growing arbitrarily large. 
with either x or a as they grow arbitrarily large it actually just converges to zero so yeah that is a useful property that will come in handy later so i'm gonna write write out the integral function as the integral from zero to positive infinity of sine uh, sine x by x times e to the negative uh, ax so once i take the uh, derivative of i with respect to a and once again it will the total derivative will be converted into a partial one inside the uh, integral so the uh, the first half the first part of the function you may say is just a constant because we're holding x constant while differentiating with respect to a so sine x by x times e to the negative ax times uh, the as per the chain rule you're going to get negative x right so the x's cancel out and you have a negative sign out here and you're integrating from zero to positive infinity e to the negative ax times sine of x with respect to x so now you're at that stage where you're integrating with respect to x only now uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to uh, take the indefinite integral j of e to the negative ax sine x dx and i'm going to just evaluate this integral and plug in the limits uh, at the end right so that's my line of thought and uh, now to pick which function to uh, obviously you have to use integration by parts right we have to use integration by parts but what function do we integrate and what function do we differentiate now uh, here's a tip differentiate the uh, exponential function because it contains the parameter a you could try integrating this one and differentiating the uh, uh, the trig function instead but that won't uh, actually be very favorable when you come back to the integration with respect to a so because it contains the parameter a i'm going to be differentiating it and uh, i'm going to integrate the trig function so uh, this is for differentiation this is for integration so that's going to be uh, e to the negative ax times the integral of sine of x is negative cos x right and just for some more writing space um, negative sine and i have the uh, integrated function negative cos x and the derivative of uh, e to the negative ax with respect to x with respect to x right so that's going to be negative a times e to the negative ax dx so the negative signs cancel out for the integral uh, here and you have a, you still have a negative sign out here anyway so that's a times e to the negative ax times cos x dx and once again i'm going to perform one more integration by parts so this is uh coming this is a uh, coming into place very nicely so uh again differentiate this part and integrate this part so the integral of uh cos of cosine of x is just the uh, sine of x function right so that's going to be there's going to be a minus sign here then the integrated function times uh, the derivative which is negative a times e to the negative ax so now i can uh, expand the brackets and write e to the negative ax times cos x minus uh, a e negative ax sine x and i think there was a negative sign yeah i almost missed this like damn that was going to give me a headache later in the video so plus uh no 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 uh you have two negatives a negative negative sign negative sign right so that's a squared uh times e to the negative ax times sine x dx which is uh all of this is equal to j and this is just a squared times j negative a squared times j of course so if i transfer all of this to the uh, left hand side i'm gonna get one plus a squared times j and then i have to divide by one plus a squared as well so let me just do all of this uh directly in one go uh, let me take a common term here e to the negative uh negative of e to the negative ax so negative sine e to the negative ax divided by this one plus a squared times cos of x plus a times sine of x and uh, this was the uh pseudo integral 
function j. Whereas I wanted the derivative of i with respect to a, which was exactly the same integral, but with another negative sign out here. So that's going to be converted into a positive sign because of this negative sign. And e to the negative ax over 1 plus a squared. And times cos of x plus a times sine of x. And the limits uh, for the uh, integral were 0 and positive infinity. So first of all, if you plug in the upper limit, then the limit of this function as x tends to positive infinity is zero anyway. So the limit is uh, the limit is zero. So the first term is going to be zero times something which is zero. So that's the uh, evaluation of the first limit of the upper limit. And so you're going to be left with the uh, lower limit. So that's upper limit value minus lower limit value. And the lower the, the uh, lower limit value is when you plug in x equals 0. So you're going to get 1 by 1 plus a squared and cos of x, cos of 0 is 1 and sine of 0 is 0. So you're going to get negative of 1 plus a squared. That's the derivative of i with respect to a. And now to get back your integral function you have to integrate with respect to a. So and because my integral function it was defined as a definite integral, let me just write this here one more time as a reminder. That's 0 to positive infinity e to the negative ax sine x by x dx. I'm also going to integrate uh, definitely here. And now I think you see the utility of taking the uh, negative sign, the uh, negative sign for the argument of the exponential function. So as per the fundamental theorem of calculus, the left-hand side reduces to i of infinity minus i of zero equal to the negative sign of the inverse tangent of a with limits being zero and positive infinity. Now, what the hell is this i of infinity? Well, it's obviously the limit of i of a as a approaches positive infinity. Now, if a approaches positive infinity, then this term here, e to the negative ax, this approaches zero. So anything multiplied by it, by sin, like sin, uh, sine of x by x, anything multiplied by it will also approach zero. So all of this is zero, and the integral of zero is zero anyway. So i of positive infinity is just zero. That's minus i of zero. And if you uh, plug in the upper and lower limits here, then you're going to get... Uh, for the inverse tangent function, pi by 2 minus 0. So this implies that i of 0 equals uh, negative of i of 0 equals negative pi by 2, and they cancel out to give you a positive pi by 2. Now, what what is i of 0? What is i of 0? Well, uh, if you plug in if you plug in a equals 0 here, then you get e to the 0, which is just 1. And if you have 1 times sine of x by x, that means you have the integral from 0 to positive infinity of sine of x by x dx, and that's going to be equal to pi by 2. So that is a very beautiful integral. This is a wonderful integral to solve by the uh, Feynman technique. So if you want the, uh, if you replace the limits by negative to positive infinity, then you're going to get twice this value, so you're going to get pi. So there you have it. That's uh, another, uh, that's, uh, that concludes another video on Feynman integration. I hope you liked it. Be sure to like and subscribe.